Okay. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. All right, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna show you guys something. Oh my fucking god! Look at this. <clears throat> this is what isolation does to you. This is what your fourth week of isolation does to you. Hey, what's going on, you guys? Welcome back to another video. Cheers. Ah, don't you just love the first sip of coffee in the morning? It does something. It just makes you feel some kind of way. Anyways, guys, it's made me feel good enough to crack open the camera once again and show you guys what happened yesterday. Have a look at this. The household had the amazing idea to try and send me blonde. Um, I mean, you guys know, at the best of times, I like to change my look. Today is extremely different. It's got my Harry Potter glasses and my Eminem haircut halfway through. So with that being said, let's get into it, guys. Today... We've got two players to look at, two more. They are New York Giants legends, I believe. And uh, their names are Victor Cruz and Darius Slayton. So with that being said, I want to wish you guys a fantastic day, wherever you are in the world. Uh, today's date is the 22nd of April. And um, well, it's been four weeks of, of, of uh, isolating ourselves as a household in this house. And... Um, Really, the only time we've, we've left the house is to go and play some basketball or go and play some tennis or go for a walk. I actually went for a 10k run the other day. That felt quite good. But that's enough about me. Let's get into the first of the two players for today. His name is Victor Cruz. Okay, so before we move forward, I do, I do want to just mention just once and for all, um, these glasses are prescription and this haircut is not finished. Let's continue. All right, Victor Cruz. I've put his name into YouTube. This is exactly what's come up. I've never heard his name before. I've never seen him play before. I don't know what position he plays. I don't know if he's fast, if he's got a mouth on him, if he's got, you know, a crazy childhood story, if he has other talents. But having a look at this, Victor Cruz, pop of the morning. Victor Cruz dishes on why he turned down Dancing with the Stars. So, uh, and it's got Victor Cruz Salsa King. That's the name that Joseph Vincent has given to him. So I'm assuming Victor Cruz has got some history. I'm assuming he's got some nicknames. I'm going to look up Victor Cruz's top 10 plays with the New York Giants because that's the same video that I looked at for Daniel Jones. So let's do it. Let's start it off with some highlights from the NFL channel. I don't even know what position he plays. For some reason, I feel like he plays cornerback. For some reason. Let's have a look at him. I've been up and working to the morning, yeah. Yeah, they've been sleeping now, I swear they storming, yeah. Yeah, and I swear I'm cooking like a foreman, foreman. Uh, and my foreman jumping like it's Jordan on my way. Broom, broom, tell him I'm on my lane, I've been praying. Yeah, yeah, gotta say this thing, I'm the same. I don't need another person telling me I can't. Victor Cruz. Okay, so he looks young. He is young. Is he still playing? No, he's not playing. It seems like he retired early. Why is that? This might be part of the story. Okay, interesting. Victor Michael Cruz, born November 11th, 1986. Former American football wide receiver. Okay, so he's not on defense. He's on offense. That's good. Played college football at UMass, which is the University of Massachusetts. Signed with the New York Giants as an undrafted free agent in 2010. With the Giants, he won Super Bowl... Oh my god, this always fucks me up. I'm um, 50... With the Giants, he won Super Bowl 51 over the New England Patriots and made the 212 Pro Bowl. Okay, what have we got? Six foot, 204 pounds. He's 33 as of today. He played for the Giants from 10 to 16 and went to the Bears for one season as a member of the practice squad. Super Bowl champion, how good. Pro Bowl one year, how fucking good. Second team All-Pro the year before. NFL record 99-yard reception. I've heard about a 99-yard reception. Was it his or was it the other guys? I'm not sure. First team all CAA, which is Colonial Athletic Association, is a collegiate athletic conference affiliated with the NCAA's Division I, whose full members are located in East Coast states. Okay, so that makes sense. Played college football on the, on the, uh, the East Coast and then ended up playing professional football on the East Coast too. All right, um, what do we got here? His father was African-American, his mother was Puerto Rican. Cruz's father died by suicide in 2007. Shit. Okay, so his college career. 
Initially struggled to successfully combine his college studies with his football career and was twice sent home from the University of Massachusetts for academic reasons. He only became eligible to play for the University of Massachusetts in 2007, the same year that his father committed suicide, but went on to have both a solid college football career and to complete a college degree. Cruz finished his career at UMass with 131 catches, ranking him fourth on the all-time list despite the fact he didn't start a game until his junior season. Now that's saying something. He scored 11 touchdowns in his career and had just under 2,000 receiving yards. He was named a first-team All-Colonial Athletic Association wide receiver for the years 2008 and 2009. And that is what we just saw. Pre-draft measurables. This is always good. Okay, so he's 182. 5 foot 11 and 5 eighths of an inch. So he's just under 6 foot. 206 pounds. We'll call it 205. 447 for the 40, so he's definitely quick as a wide receiver. Uh, vertical jump, 41 and a half inches. Broad jump, 10 feet 5. And 16 reps on the bench. So, yeah, he's, he's an absolute athlete, for sure. Quick, he, uh, he can jump. And he's strong. And he's a wide out. So he's going to be coming up against the smaller guys of the defense. So, it, you know, with, with these stats. New York Giants, so he went undrafted. He went undrafted, that's interesting, he was signed the day after the draft by the New York Giants. So they must have, they must have been looking at him. Okay, so I could, it looks like it's got a, you know, a bit of a write-up for each of his seasons. I'm not going to read any of that because we're going to watch the highlights, but what I will read is just his final little bit here from when he went to the Chicago Bears. Okay, so it, it, it looks as if, oh fuck, okay, so he's, he's got injured. I just saw he had two years of rehab. Should I keep reading or should I just watch some highlights? Or, better yet, should I watch Joseph Vincent's video? I think I'm going to watch that. He's going to give us a... He should give us a, a pretty complete rundown of what's happened here. He's obviously made that video just after Victor Cruz retired, so I think this, sh this should be perfect. Alright, whilst that's loading, let's, let's continue reading. Okay, so he got... After apparently two years of rehab, he got released by the Chicago Bears, uh, sorry, released by the, uh, the Giants, and signed by the Chicago Bears. He signed a one-year deal on September 2nd, which is basically the day before the start of the season, he was released by the Bears. There was some speculation that Cruz would return to New York after the Giants lost three receivers for the season, which included Odell Beckham Jr. However, the Giants apparently never called Cruz, which would which likely would have been his last chance to play in the NFL. Okay, so he, he didn't retire of his own accord, which sucks. It seemed he was forced to due to injuries and whatever else happened. Okay, a year later, August 21st, 2018, Cruz announced his retirement to join ESPN as an analyst. He signed a one-day contract with the New York Giants to officially retire with the team. That is fucking cool. And we've got his career stats here. 70 games. 54 started, <clears throat> 303 receptions in the regular season, 4,549 yards, that's an average of 15 yards per reception, which is fantastic. The longest touchdown, oh sorry, the longest reception obviously being 99 yards, which was a touchdown. So 70 games, he scored 25 touchdowns, uh, one rushing attempt for three yards, and no touchdowns. He had three fumbles and lost all three. Postseason, they played four games in 2011, where they won the Super Bowl, and one game in 2016. In the 2011 postseason, Victor Cruz had 21 receptions for 269 yards at an average of 12.8 per reception, one touchdown, and that's about it. Okay, so after reading all that and before watching him play, I feel like, you know, if you're a Giants fan, he's going to be one of your favorite players. If you didn't back the Giants, you may have, you know, not really taken a huge amount of notice of this guy. But clearly, I mean, Harrison, the guy who recommended me look at Victor Cruz, has an affiliation with him, he likes him. Um, I'm interested to, to, to see what this season-ending injury was in 2014, and what kept him out from the entire 2015 season, which led him to, you know, probably his worst season on record in 2016, and from there, being cut. So let's get into it, guys. <clears throat> Victor Cruz, Salsa King. Now, I'm assuming, I'm assuming, having looked at his story, 
they're calling him Salsa King because of his post-touchdown celebrations. In fact, one of them, I just skimmed over before, got him fined. <clears throat> one thing I will say... One thing I will say is that I have not watched one of Joseph Vincent's videos in months. And he's one of my favorite content creators. So I'm going to enjoy this and I hope you guys do too. So as people know, I was an undrafted free agent. I mean, you couldn't, the guy's trying to make an impression on a, on a staff. He's undrafted. You can't do better as a wide receiver. Yeah. Come on, what happened? Come on, So he comes in undrafted and he starts killing it as a rookie wide receiver and goes to the Super Bowl in his first year or second year. Teams in need of a young receiver that can make one handed acrobatic catches. What an unbelievable story. Oh, yes, it, is. it really is amazing when you think that in 2010 he's a special teams guy, college free agent. Special teams? Three miles from that live stadium became a local hero the summer before when he torched the Jets for three touchdowns in a preseason game. Three touchdowns. On and missed a full season. Where is he? Top left. Show me a step. Oh! Beautiful man, he split right through them. The Seltzer King is here. With the Giants down four in the fourth quarter, Cruz would be the hero. First four games in his career, didn't have a single catch. And wound up being a receiver with the most catches in his first 25 games as a Giant. Turn around and get there. Undrafted, first season, in the preseason, and he's making plays like that. Yeah, I can understand his reaction. Described as fearless with deceptive speed. Deceptive speed, 447 in fact. If he's top right, that he does have good speed. We're gonna watch this again. And he's got the speed to finish. That is nice. Now watch this. Let's see him. Let's see him on his release, because he had some nice speed there. Right. He's he's here, isn't he? Is he here or this one? Yeah. Okay. So he's the inside guy, slot receiver. Watch this speed off the line. It is. It was a pretty in-depth route, but the speed off the line is what got him into position in the first place. So, well done. And then you've got the 41-inch vertical. Sorry, I forgot about that. He's just a solid receiver, isn't he? He's got speed, he's got hops, he's got good hands. He wants it, man. He wants it, he was undrafted. An undrafted free agent who possessed raw athleticism. Heading into the season, one of the Giants' biggest concerns is how to fill the void left by Steve Smith. Steve Smith. Oh. Well, coach, I know you had confidence. It's funny, isn't it? Seeing seeing a catch, seeing a catch from from this angle right there. Okay, seeing that 
still, you realize how close, you know, it was. It's a game of inches, right? We always hear that. You realize how close that defender was to tipping that ball. But if you turn the camera 90 degrees and you watch from the other angle, it seems like it was so far away. It's See, look at that. That looks as if, you know, he's a good two yards away. But it was a lot closer than that. We know that, don't we? Coach, I know you had confidence in Victor coming into the season, but did you really think in your heart of hearts he could be this good? Get your Cruz runs by him, and how about this goal kick, Victor Cruz? Good speed, Victor Cruz. And he got to throw. And so he's on ESPN now. Ooh, stay on your feet, whatever you do. Do the salsa. Come on, man. Do it. Do it. Do it. Get up. Go. <laughs> Reminds me of Antonio Brown. I'm not gonna lie. Just walking across there, he reminded me of Antonio Brown. Forty-six, not fifty-one. To finally be on that field and look up and see, you know, Super Bowl 2012. He did what this so many others yards could never say they had. This is a guy that was a playmaker after the catch. Manning steps up, he's got Cruz. After the catch. Oh, fuck, that's beautiful, isn't it? Straight on the chest, literally did not slow down one bit. And there you go. We found out what's behind the salsa dance. His late grandmother taught him it. Oh, I just got shivers, man. You should see my arms. Look at them. Look at them. Goosebumps. He cruises a stuff. I think he's a playmaker. I think he can get it done. So he scored 25 touchdowns. We've probably seen most of them. So the Redskins now lead by three, 23-20. With 1.32 to go, the Giants have three timeouts remaining. The last possession, keep the drive alive on a third down and two. As Manning looks for Cruz. In a fair few times. There's been a fair few times that Victor Cruz's speed that I didn't know whether, you know, would be elite enough has carried him through to touchdowns. Impressive speed. Impressive speed. I mean, 447 is quick, but I'd say he's playing, you know, in game at, what, like a 4-4 flat? You know what I mean? The this, this speed and the way he uses it, the way he runs onto the ball, doesn't slow down. It's fantastic. Cruz, 
catch it to one and then throws the place into another salsa. His second touchdown of the game. Throw. He looks left. He throws left for Cruz. Who makes the catch? Touchdown, Giants. He jumped right over the defender, and for the third time tonight, he's saucing. Boston. Do you remember when, when, when it first happened? Not, no, no collision with another player. This is just something popped. Yeah, exactly. So you that know was what the, that is? Fourth down and goal. What is it? Is his knee? His shoulder? Fuck, where is he, man? Ah, shit. Let me see that again. That's so weird. Let me watch that. So it was his right knee. Let's have a look at that. He's jumping off his right leg right now. With that step. And he's like running and all of a sudden something was just running and I felt the tendon pop and I heard Fuck. it immediately and I went down to the ground, man, hu hugging my knee for dear life. Kills you when a guy, you know, so good for his team goes down. And when you saw him sob like that, uh, you, you, you knew, knew it was over. You knew right away. So whenever you hear something pop inside your body, you know that's not good. Especially it's when it's never good. But when it's your career, this exactly. is your whole life. Exactly. Man. This is so crazy. You literally see your entire career uh, flash. Fuck. It happens to the best of them, doesn't it? For Seriously. Your, uh, <clears throat> All those years. All those years of damage you to the know knee. That to the there's the light at the end of the tunnel. You know that the hard work that you put in in that rehab stage is going to prevail, and you're going to be better on the other side. New York is for me. New Jersey is for me. It's a place where I grew up. It's home, and I understood that it's bigger than just football. It's bigger than just. Well me. done, mate. Well done to come back from that because not a lot of people do. Process of not being Even professional the athletes, team, and they just fade out. PT, you know, for a whole year. He's just a slot receiver. No. Let me listen to that again, sorry. Then having to go to PT, you know, for a whole year. He's just a slot receiver and doesn't play outside. I'm just grateful to have this opportunity again. I'm working very, very hard to make sure I'm out there on the field for the long haul. He's not the same player that he was before all the injuries. You know, you're removed from the game for so long. You just want to be able to be in uniform and just run out there again. story for Cruz to make it back to the field had not played in a game since October of 2014 knee injury calf injury groin injury in training camp this year what is that moment like your amazing return to the field did you even remember like what it felt like or was it just a blur I mean, what's it, it like? definitely was a blur I was just excited to run out on that field after missing almost two four years due to injury Comes back in 2016. Now, one thing that Victor Cruz was always known for was his quickness off the line of scrimmage. And steps into it, it's got Cruz. And Victor Cruz down inside the 20. Touchdown, Giants. 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 Touchdown, Giants
of the game of American football. Any American sports. I mean, with this new Michael Jordan documentary series that's been dropped, there has been many rugby players that have made just as incredible comebacks as Victor Cruz. I'm putting that out there. But their story has not been told. So no one would know about it. Someone needs to start documenting the fuck out of rugby. That's all I've got to say. The next thing I wanted to say is where would I put Victor Cruz on a rugby field? And I would have to say, depending on his ball skills, now he can catch, but can he pass? Now he can catch, but can he kick? Now he can catch, but can he tackle? And depending on how good he is at all three of those disciplines, I would place him possibly on the wing, if not one in at centre. But I don't feel like he's got the bulk to be inside at second five. And I don't feel he's going to have the playmaking ability to be in one more at, at number 10. Um, and if that doesn't mean anything to you, then what I would recommend is going back into my rugby related videos library and checking out some of my rugby videos because I explain a hell of a lot of things. I explain about a winger, I explain about a fullback, I explain about being in the back line, I explain about sidestepping, passing, kicking, tackling, among many other things. And with that being said, guys, I hope you have a fantastic day. I've really enjoyed this. The next guy that we're going to be looking at and the last for the day is Darius Slayton. So with that being said, I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.